Anytime a PQ leader wants to talk about a, a referendum, about sovereignty, about what would happen in, in, in a sovereign Quebec, she's off message during an electoral campaign. Seems Pauline Marois didn't get the memo. Since the very first week of the Quebec, uh, Quebec election campaign, talk of another referendum has dominated the debate and had the PQ leader on the defensive. But it's not like she didn't see it coming, not like the party itself didn't play a big role in putting sovereignty back front and center. It was clearly a big gamble in what's arguably been the most charged Quebec campaign in decades. Here's Terence McKenna. When Pauline Marois called this election, she didn't even mention the word sovereignty or referendum, planning to downplay that issue. All that changed five days later when she rolled out her star recruit, Quebec media mogul Pierre Carl Pelado. PQ strategists thought it was a masterstroke. We've had a lot of economists in the, in the, in the past, uh, small-sized uh, businessmen, but not a tycoon. No, he's a tycoon. Uh, and that was, wow, what's happening? We need to convince a part of the population that uh, Quebec independence is economically feasible and he's bringing that, uh, that argument with his own presence. And so it, uh, it was a game changer in that sense and in, in some others as well. Oh, it was a game changer, all right. Especially the choreographed finale when Pelado raised his fist and proclaimed his devotion to the cause of making Quebec a country. That image with Marois applauding in the background, was reproduced on almost every front page in Quebec and Canada and put the sovereignty referendum issue right back on the front burner. This Quebec election campaign has been remarkable for its twists, reversals and mudslinging. The competition to define the ballot box question has been ferocious. The PQ wanted to highlight its secular charter and the corruption of the last Liberal regime. The Liberals were determined to focus on the possibility of a sovereignty referendum. Liberal leader Philip Quial, the former neurosurgeon, health minister and businessman, quickly sensed that the referendum issue was his most potent weapon against the PQ. And we've got our great country, Canada, and you want to take this away from us? No way! It will not pass! From day one, you've been accused of fear-mongering about the possibility of a referendum. Are you a bit obsessed with that issue? No, I, the difference is this time I decided to call the PQ's bluff from day one. Usually they tell the public, you know, we just want to run a good government. Maybe we'll see about a referendum. Who knows? I, I wanted deliberately to put the issue front and center on the table because this has to stop at some point. <laughs> Emboldened by the apparent boost to the sovereignist cause, Pauline Marois let down her guard and mused about post-independence issues like the use of the Canadian dollar and borders. You know, that will be possible for all the Quebecers to go to uh, Victoria, to go to Vancouver, and that will be the same for all the Canadians to come in Quebec, and they will not uh, have to pay at the frontier. <laughs> La Presse columnist Patrick Lagasse says that was Marois' first blunder. Anytime a PQ leader wants to talk about uh, a referendum, about sovereignty, about what would happen in, in, in uh, sovereign Quebec, she's off message during an electoral campaign because it does it's red meat for the PQ base of course but it's not red meat for the general population most of the Quebec business community blames the independence issue for bringing instability and scaring off investment the renewed referendum talk brought up all the old questions about how an independent Quebec would fare especially without the massive transfers of cash the province now receives from the federal government. Would it be easy for Quebec to live without $16 billion of net federal transfers to Quebec? Well, yes, because uh, we're sending $55 billion a year uh, to Ottawa. But you're getting $16 billion more than you're sending. No, that's, that, that's, that's not the way, uh, the way we see it. Here are the facts from the Quebec Institute of Statistics. In 2012, Quebec sent $44.5 billion to Ottawa in taxes and revenues, 
and in return received $60.8 billion in federal transfers and expenditures, a net gain of $16.3 billion. Carlos Letal is rated by Bloomberg News as the number two economist in the world. He has just entered politics as a Quebec Liberal candidate. The federal government also uh, spends money in other ways uh, in, in, in Quebec. Uh, so the, the, the bill would be much, much higher than that. It's not just $16 billion. Uh, it's, it's everything else uh, that Quebec also uh, benefits from being inside the Canadian Federation. The competition to become the voice of average voters in this campaign is being won by third party leader Francois Legault. Early polls showed that his Coalition Avenir Quebec was losing half of its traditional support. Mostly people worried about a referendum returning to the Liberal Party. In the first TV debate, Legault tried to recapture that anti-referendum vote by aggressively attacking Pauline Marois. Allez-vous, oui ou non, tenir un référendum dans le prochain mandat? Non, il n'y en aura pas de référendum tant que les Québécois sont pas prêts. She said, I, I won't do one until I decide to do one. So it, it, it's not an answer. So it means that uh, she's not ready to give a guarantee that she will not Marois' ambiguous referendum answer raised suspicions of a hidden agenda. Is it not true that if you were elected to a majority government, you would do everything in your power to bring about a referendum on sovereignty? If we're a majority government, our hope is that we'll bring, at some point, Quebec to independence. But we see that the majority of Quebecers do not want to go on that path at the present time. And we respect that. And we won't, will not force them to have the debate. And we certainly don't want to have a failed referendum. Voters are not buying that answer. Polls show that 60% don't want another referendum. And so Philippe Cuillard's Liberals surged into the lead after the first debate. Pauline Marois desperately tried to change the topic to integrity. An investigation about this situation she unleashed a torrent of attacks against the Liberal Party for all the shady practices of the past under the government of Jean Charest. The Parti Libéral of Monsieur Couillard has exactly the same team that had Monsieur Charest, who refused to tenir a commission d'enquête. And one of the big issues in this campaign is that will we come back to the Liberal government that opposed an inquiry, that protected these crooks? That's a big challenge that we have. That's a big question that we're asking. Do you recognize that the Liberal Party has a bad reputation for illegal party financing and for corruption? It does have that reputation. Uh, I think it's largely undeserved. Whoever uh, had the reprehensible behavior will, will, will have to, to pay the price. Uh, so you know, we have now a new leadership. We have new people in the party and we, you know, the past is behind us. The Liberals may have thought it was behind them, but Philippe Cuillard was dogged by old allegations about his relationship with the alleged fraudster Arthur Porter and new charges that he stashed money in a tax haven when he was working abroad. Bon, allez. The Premier, however, has a few skeletons in her own closet. Parce que de okay. de Starting with a wiretap telephone call in which former union boss Michel Arsenault bragged about a secret deal he had with Marois and her husband. Marois claims there was no such deal, but won't release her financial records. I said that clearly Michel Arsenault thought yes. he was buying influence with you oh, okay. by investing millions in your husband's okay. company. You know, Mr. Arsenault tried, maybe he think he could try to influence me. But that was not possible. The, the question was, how much money did you make I don't and know. your husband make in, these, in that deal and others like it? I don't know, because there was no deal, and I don't know about the, this uh, question. Her problems compounded with the stunning Radio-Canada revelations that Marois' husband, Claude Blanchet, had participated in possibly illegal fundraising for her leadership and election campaigns. Quebec's entire political class was becoming soiled by the mudslinging. Even seasoned observers of the Quebec political scene, people who've been following politics for 25 years, 
think that this is the dirtiest campaign ever. In the last week of the campaign, with their numbers falling, the PQ tried to bring the conversation back to their secular charter proposal. Polls show that the charter has strong majority support among Quebec francophones, which is what gave Marois the confidence to call this election. But that issue too brings blowback. In a campaign appearance at the University of Montreal, Jean-François Lisée was challenged by a doctoral student who said the charter targets immigrants. Uh, Est-ce que vous pourriez assumer et reconnaître que le pays que vous nous proposez est présenté uh, sur le dos d'un ennemi intérieur? Alors, moi, je pense que ce qui est très important, c'est aussi d'envoyer un autre signal. Et le signal, quand on dit qu'on veut un Québec plus accueillant, on veut un Québec qui est ferme sur ses valeurs, mais qui est accueillant. Yeah, we can say that we are welcoming, but we, we have to prove it, we have to show it. Uh, that's why I, uh, I was wondering what, what he was uh, selling, like, uh, as a product, what kind of uh, Quebec he was selling, and... Um, are you buying? Honestly, I cannot buy a society that, that could uh, ex exclude me. When it comes to identity issues in Quebec, language is always the most important. In the last TV debate, Philippe Couillard came close to political suicide by seeming to argue that all Quebecers should speak English as well as French. This is supposed to be a French society. For the leader of a major political party to go on TV and say everybody should speak English is like a political third rail in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And he touched it. He touched it, and he should know better. Uh, many have suggested you were kind of tone deaf about the bilingualism issue in that, in that second debate. Did you make an error there? No, I said the truth. The truth is that Bill 01 and 101, which is necessary and needs to be applied because it has achieved a good balance between communities. We all want Quebec to be the common language in the public space in Quebec. It's very important. It's our heritage. We're very proud of it. And by the way, it's part of what makes Canada a special country too. But this being said, there's not a single parent in Quebec that doesn't want their child to be bilingual. As the PQ moved into the final phase of this campaign, it was clear that the referendum issue was dragging them down. Jean Even Jean-François Lisée, who has been the major sovereignist strategist for 20 years, clearly felt defeated. Franchement, moi j'ai toujours été optimiste sur la souveraineté, vous savez. J'ai rarement été aussi pessimiste que maintenant. The, the first guard of sovereignists are now starting to die off. And uh, the, the, the new, new immigrants to Quebec did not go through uh, the constitutional crisis of the 70s and 80s, did not grow up on constitutional po politics. This is why in, in, in the PQ's intellectual circles, the common wisdom has it that, you know, the window for a referendum in sovereignty is closing. Is it true? I don't know. But I would say, judging by what they're doing, for the la what they've been doing for the last seven years, which is, you know, really emphasize on identity politics, uh, I would say it, it's true that they're a bit desperate. The only strong support for the Parti Québécois is now in the 55 to 64 age group, which has led to the widespread feeling that this might be the last hurrah for sovereignty. Amen. Unless Pauline Marois wins a majority, which seems highly unlikely, she will almost certainly be out as leader. However promising the polls might be for the Liberals today, this campaign has been so volatile that many Quebec Federalists will still be holding their breath till the results are in. For The National, I'm Terence McKenna in Montreal.